All right, in the final section, we just gonna explain or see what kind of what kind of um, basic transformations we we have. Like once we have things in terms of vector, and we know how to do math on vectors, like then we can uh, we can actually identify all these all these um transformations <clears throat> using vectors operations, and as in the the, the one we see in the curve. Right, actually this. <clears throat> all this one, uh, all of these um, vectors can be can be thought of, can be explained in terms of um, this kind of transformation, <clears throat> where you map x to a x plus v y, and you map you map y to c x plus d y. So it's some number times x plus some number times y, both on top and on bottom. And these these numbers or these multipliers can be anything. Like for instance, you if you map x y to two x and three y, it's still in this form. Right? Except that we have like two so x plus zero times y. Like we don't get any y. We can we can let any of these numbers be zero. <clears throat> and likewise, we have zero times x plus three times y. So this basic one. <clears throat> Of um, dilation or scaling, or skewing, uh, is in this in this form. There is a mathematical properties, like what the actual linear transformation is, like how it is deformed, how it is defined. But if if you if you know that one, we can prove all the useful formulas. But let's say, but we are not going to into details here, <clears throat> because that's too sophisticated. Just focus on the the fact. That we are given that oh yeah if you transform it or you change it using this kind of formula then okay, so should be linear <clears throat> and the the transformations we saw uh this one so but we have a translation so is this translation is simply you add two vectors together yeah, I already explained that earlier. <clears throat> but here we we think of the vector a as a fixed vector. Remember, remember the the cop one where you have to choose a vector first and then you click translate or something and everything moves. And yeah, that vector is fixed, and now everything else on the plane will will, will, be, will be moved or will be added by this vector. So that's a transformation. It can be written as simply as this one. Oh, by the way, um, in case you notice this one, it, it's it's kind of interesting that this addition is not linear transformation. It, it seems linear in the sense that oh, you add things together, but it's not linear because if you notice the formula, right, the formula doesn't allow you to add a constant. If you add or subtract that by a constant, then that doesn't follow this this form, <clears throat> and so yeah, the translation is not linear, which is good because we we want this to have some nice some nice properties. And this one actually doesn't have a nice property; it's just easy to compute and to interpret. <clears throat> but in practice, yeah, it's not linear. You may or may not want to do that. <clears throat> then we have here the uh, the dilation. Again, to be, oh, I, I actually, uh, let me let me go back here. Oh yeah, this is fine. <clears throat> right, then, um, I think this is um actually not not quite correct. That that there are actually two types of um dilation. You can multiply that by a single vector. Oh, sorry, a single number, so that both the top and the bottom are scaled the same way, right? Oh, or you can multiply it. You can sh you can multiply them by different factors. Let's say that you multiply the top one by a and by the top, by the bottom one by b. <coughs> you can also get um, kind of a scaling, but I think it has a slightly different name called skewing. Something. The shape changes somehow. But yeah, there's um another another transformation that can be explained using a vector. <coughs> So oh, yeah, scaling up or down, plus reversing, or you know, flipping if the number happens to be negative. 
Then we have a reflection. Then there are two types of reflection. We have a reflection across a line, which is what you think of as um, looking in, into the mirror. But we also have a reflection across a point, which is kind of weird, right? But it, it actually makes more sense in, in terms of like math, because if you reflect over a point, then we have a closed formula for that. If you reflect over a line, then the formula is slightly annoying. It works though, but yeah, it's slightly annoying. But if it's over a point, then the formula is kind of nice. <clears throat> so it looks kind of, if you notice, it looks kind of an, uh, a combination of a translation by a number and <clears throat> also a reflection. Right? Because we multiply p by minus 1. So we change it like from this, this v to minus v. And we really translate that by some number. But yeah, <clears throat> this works. This is a reflection. And again, it's because there is a constant that is not linear. <clears throat> it doesn't have those nice properties. But nevertheless, you can express them in, in terms of vector. Oh, yeah, maybe I should go back to what it means by a reflection over the point. It means for any point in this shape, you draw a line to that point, and then draw another line to <clears throat> the opposite of that point, so that we have this kind of shape. And you have this point on the top left, you draw the line to this point, and then to this point, so you get a new point. <clears throat> and if you repeat the same process for all the points in this shape to reflect, to go over this point, this single point, can you get a result? And also note that this is kind of like a rotation, which is actually correct. This is actually the same as a rotation by 180 degrees. But you change the center to be any point you want to. Mm. Yeah, so that's that um, reflection. It has a nice formula. And lastly, and lastly because um. I put it this last because it, it actually doesn't follow what we have had so far. We're going to have to use this in the next lecture. So we have a vector, right? And we can do things. We can use some vector transformations, operations to compute new stuff. But there's a problem with rotation. Because the thing is, you, you, can, you, can, you can actually compute the rotation. <clears throat> it's going to be not easy. It's not too difficult, but no, it's, it's not easy. So that means if, if we have this this line, like V1, V2, and this point, if you want to rotate this point to a new point by some angle, then the, uh, the coordinate of this point, or, you know, or this vector, I can be computed by using this formula. You notice that we not, now we need to, you know, charge a little bit on the cosine sine the trigonometry structure. Right, but the, the nice thing about this is um, this angle can be any angle. Remember how we actually define sine and cosine using a triangle in, at first? And then we say that, oh, this actually, this kind of pattern is actually breaks after the angle is greater than 90 degrees. It is, um, <clears throat> when it is beyond the right angle. Right, and so we have to this defy sine and cosine in different ways. And once you define sine and cosine that way, then we can rotate stuff right, by any angle. And still use the formula for sine and cosine. <clears throat> oh yeah, you, you, you can do some sophisticated math. I think you have like to draw like five different lines. Oh yeah, some kind of that. Draw so many lines and to find the, the lines, but the, the, the answer can be found. And you can see that this, is kind of, this still follows the, the formula we see above, right? It's the, the, it has V1, it has V2. They are multiplied by a constant. And this is a constant because um, if you ask me to rotate by some angle, you, you should give me, you know, you should tell me what the, that angle is. Let's say if you rotate back by 30 degrees, then you can compute cosine and sine of 30 degrees. 
and put them all into the same into this formula. I find instance cosine of 30 degrees is um square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. <clears throat> so yeah, eventually once you simplify that, then it's just a constant times V2, a constant times V2, a constant times V1, a constant times V2. So the formula is still simple. But the problem is, the problem is you can no longer express this operation in terms of vectors. And that doesn't work anymore. And that's why we're gonna have to learn about matrix next week. Soon again. <laughs> because some some nice uh, some nice observation is that if you can split them somehow into this kind of like formula, then of course somehow you can rewrite it as in terms of matrix which we see next week. And once we have a matrix and once we, you know, you know how to multiply or combine matrix together, then we can describe the whole families or all the possible linear transformations we can make. And so that's the end of the, this week lecture. Like down to the end plan, then that's leading to matrix next week. Oh yeah, and the end is um just um, let me emphasize the word without computing, or graphing. You can identify that using the the formulas we have. You know, just just see which one which which one it is, and give a short answer for that. So this is for lecture ten. See you next week for matrix and more fun stuff.